Thank you for tuning in to the Peoples and Dragons. If you enjoy the content we provide, then subscribe, like, and maybe join in on the action at www.pndrpg.com. Haven City, an ugly city. Episode 10, Big Tank, Act 1. We see a ceremony being conducted amidst an audience of robed magi sorcerers and arcane scientists in an off-world planet inside of a technologically advanced castle. We see four magi being honored before their peers for their extraordinary leaps in scientific discoveries and mutology. Among them, we see the instigator standing beside his partners, Mimiku, Deftude, and Zamina, each responsible for the creation of the G-Type Zero and One, a race created by magic and science. Time passes and we see the relationship between their team be strained as each of the geniuses have their own moral perspective of ethics regarding life and how to further evolution of their creations. This results in Mimiku going mad and disbanding from the group. Although there was intense friction between the instigator and Deftude, they both stuck together as they know they needed each other. Zamina was the middle ground between them both. One day, the group's controversial experiments are frozen and placed on hold by the Elder Council, and so the group takes their lab and goes incognito somewhere outside of their native solar system to work in solitude, unbothered. The group is then approached by an alien race called the Uncown, and known for being slavers across their star systems. They offer to fund their experiments, allowing them full freedom over their work, as well as providing a planet they have captured and secured inside of a massive alien machine that allows full, godlike control over the nature of the planet, like a computer simulation nestled in a deep hidden star system for privacy. All the Uncount ask for in return is for them to produce G-types, for them to sell to their clients. The group sees this as a new start and gladly accepts the opportunity. Months go by and the instigator and Deftude clash on how to foster the mutations, where Deftude preferred to be hands-on inside of the tank with the G-types. The instigator believed it was better to work from afar. The instigator also didn't want Deftude to discover the secret project he was working on inside of the tank. One day, Deftude entered the tank without telling anyone and has never come back out of it managing to stay undetected. The instigator wouldn't let this slow him down and has continued to work, supported by his loyal partner, Zamina, who had secretly become emotionally attached to one of the instigator's experiments. We see the instigator standing before many monitors. On the left, we see R-Type X face to face with the light. The adjacent screen displaying the vitals and a digital dashboard of controls linked to the light. The last screen we see the words daughter project and the crystal clear surveillance of Serenity, Amelia and Rose. The instigator watched intensely at the events taking place between R-Type and the light. R-Type X knew this moment would have to come. He sensed its presence lingering in space, but didn't foresee its energetic presence to be so overwhelming and powerful leagues past anything he's ever imagined to produce. This is seconded by R-Type's armor, the King's Blade. 
As the nanoplating spreads over his body under his wanderer's cloak, the suit creates a HUD displaying the threat assessment produced by his Libra, informing him of a threat out of the scope of his own power. R-Type X's Libra for a brief second had recalled an encounter with this entity, but the familiarity fades away. The eight-foot-tall, muscular being with cauliflower white flesh and a network of green illuminated veins shining through his body descends just enough where the tip of its toes touch the ground, never fully landing, its bright radiance dimming. It began to look familiar to R-Type X as Libra holds on to the memories of its recent brush with Deja Vu. R-Type X decides to play it smart and summons hundreds of clones around him and sends them to attack and distract as he retreats to the gate center. But as soon as he takes a step to flee, R-Type X appears right in front of the light. R-Type confused and as a reaction backflips and flees into another direction but reappears back in front of the light whom hasn't moved from its initial position. R-Type X pretends to retreat a third time, but when he reappears in front of the light, he does so with a powerful punch that crashes into the wall of abs that is the light. He looks up and sees that it is unfazed as his hundreds of clones then follow up with combo punches, kicks, and blasts, all failing to phase the light. The instigator presses a button and the light holds its arm out, palm open, as every clone summoned by R-Type X, including the ones surveilling the city, appear within its hand, a fraction of their original size, and it then crushes all of them in its fist as a massive explosion of light sounds off but is then muffled by the closing of its fists as it crushes everything in its palm. R-Type X, impressed but not stoked by what just happened, backs up. Then, suddenly, energy dashes forward, then changes his course in midair, preparing to attack from the side, but is met halfway by the light. R-Type X flips over the light and lands behind it, punching the ground so hard that the entire coast begins to quake, causing buildings along the entire district facing the water to begin to collapse. The impact is so powerful it sends the light into the air as R-Type trails him and unleashes a barrage of punches and kicks from every angle. The instigator's adrenaline starts pumping at the sight of R-Type's unbelievable spike in power and speed. This is what he expected from R-Type. R-Type's fists slam into the light's jaw, then a front-flipping kick crashing down onto its head, then reappearing from another angle landing 33 consecutive strikes before kicking the light to the ground at a tremendous velocity, causing a massive fissure into the coast as the ocean begins to pour into the crater form. Just as the light hits the ground and bounces, R-Type X follows up with a punch to its blank face so hard and fast that it seemed like three R-Type X struck it at once. The instigator peers over at the light's vitals, keeping track of R-Type's damage output. The instigator smiles. R-Type X lands, standing before the massive crater he left being filled with water from the ocean. A war can be seen taking place in the city off in the distance as buildings fall, and Android and Atlas Gate aircrafts can be seen shooting each other out of the sky as Kai Excalibur sets ablaze the other entire half of the city. R-Type X still senses the light's presence as the crater of water begins to light up. When suddenly, R-Type coughs up water, then begins choking and drowning, forcing him to his knees. R-Type dismisses the nano face mask and pulls down his scarf, coughing and gasping for air when he instantly appears underwater in front of the glowing light who has its large hands wrapped around R-Type X's neck. The light holds its hand out and absorbs all of the water in the ocean into his hand, including the water R-Type just swallowed, siphoning it right out of his lungs. Then, with the same hand, backhands R-Type X so hard that his energy shielding and King's Blade armor's defenses shatter on impact, destroying the helmet completely and uncovering R-Type's face, now swelling from the impact. 
the light brings its hand back across his face, but this time crashing into R-Type's Kinnon Field, a natural shield that surrounds R-Type that ends up absorbing all of the kinetic energy, making R-Type even stronger, faster, and more durable. Just in time for the third backhand, which comes swinging back around, but R-Type musters the strength to pull the light's hands from his neck, evades the light's swing in mid-air like a leaf dancing in the wind, as R-Type swings around with a powerful punch that is met on a collision course with the light's fists. The two fists clash as the light's fist plows through R-Types, obliterating his entire forearm from fist to elbow. R-Type energy dashes behind the light with an arm constructed of energy, wielding an energy katana. He plunges his energy sword straight through the light's spine and out through its stomach. The light turns its blank face toward R-Type X and cocks its head sideways, which in turn vaporizes and erases R-Type's sword and both of his arms along with it as blood gushes out of R-Type's appendages. He falls to the ground, then dive rolls to put distance between him and the light. R-Type thinks to himself that the light is incredibly unpredictable as Libra struggles to assist in a countermeasure. The light begins to glow again. <laughs>